We've looked at a lot of video game movies in our previous top 10s. Good ones, bad ones, some as big as Mila Jokovic's ego and that's really bloody saying something. So now we're going to look at a few what if video game movies. Games that would actually translate quite well to the silver screen. Now we're going to skip Zelda since rumour has it that the film is already in the works. There's even rumours about Henry Cavill being considered to voice Link. So come join me, ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude this trilogy of videos about video game movies. The good, the bad, and the hypothetical. It's Snooty Nerds Top 10 Video Games That Should Have Movies. We will start the list with an easy one. Time Crisis has everything you'd expect of a 90s action thriller. It's like a mixture of Speed, James Bond, Commando, Mission Impossible, and Die Hard. The one-man army, Richard Miller, infiltrating a foreign castle to rescue the president's daughter, Rachel, with whom you're definitely on with for a gratuitous love scene just before the credits roll. All the while fighting charismatic villains Sherudo, played by Nikolai Costa Waldo, and the ever tenacious Wild Duck, played by Nicolas Cage. And because Wild Duck has the tenacity of a cockroach, it means he's got plenty of potential to keep coming back in the sequels. It could become an entire film franchise. And why not? The first Resident Evil film got five sequels that nobody asked for. Contra is a staple on the NES and the quintessential run and gun game. But does it have a strong enough narrative to carry a feature film? Well, of course it does. What a stupid question. It's two macho marines running through the jungle to an alien spaceship and blasting the bejesus out of anyone that gets in their way. Sounds like a cross between Alien, Rambo, and Predator, doesn't it? Because it's pretty obvious that's what Konami had in mind when they made the game, even modelling the player characters after Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Borrowing the likeness of two of the biggest action stars of the 1980s, Contra was just asking for the Hollywood treatment. Schwarzenegger and Stallone is the main duo, doing what they do best. Rampage through the jungle and blow everything up, while coining catchphrases and meme-worthy one-liners. Sorry to break your heart, Red Falcon! When I was writing an early draft of this script, I was going over what games could work as a feature film. One of the first ones that came to mind was House of the Dead. However, I didn't realise until later that a House of the Dead film already exists. So, let's try something a bit different. Typing of the Dead! Guns are great, but everyone knows that the only thing that can truly stop a vampire is the power of correct spelling. What do you mean a premise this idiotic could never work as a film? Of course it can! Just put Edgar Wright in the director's chair, with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost to play the main characters, and you have everything you need for a pure comedy masterpiece! There is a market for comedic horror films, and a film based on the Dreamcast's hilarious keyboard shooting game would be the perfect film to fill that gap in the market. King's Quest is to the point-and-click adventure as Double Dragon is to the beat-em-up. I spent the past December playing through the first seven installments to familiarise myself with this series, and sometimes they were more frustrating than fun. Anyone who had to climb that bloody beanstalk knows exactly what I'm talking about! The series as a whole tends to lampoon popular fairy tales and folklore. Quite like Shrek, in fact. As the original series of games progressed, it began to feel more and more like a Disney animated film. Over-the-top magical villains, a love interest whom King Graham marries after just one date, and one of the biggest Disney staples, talking animal sidekicks. Graham, watch out! A poisonous snake! King's Quest VI even had a lot of familiar Disney voice actors working on it. Robbie Benson, Tony Jay, Lucy Taylor, not to mention Girl in the Tower, the beautiful power ballad that plays over the closing credits. King's Quest VII takes it a step further by introducing a Don Bluth-inspired art style, and it even begins with Rosalind singing like a Disney princess. With all this, King's Quest would make for a pretty decent animated film, especially since King Graham tends to use his creative thinking to solve problems rather than fighting. Despite the fact that, like Gaston, the man's got biceps to spare. Beat em ups aren't really known for having gripping storylines. Most of them are just about moving right and hospitalising everyone in your way. Although, Fleetway Comics attempted to give Golden Axe and Streets of Rage a bigger narrative in the United Kingdom Sonic the Comic back in the 1990s. I had a toss-up between the two, and I figured that Golden Axe would work better in cinematic form. Sword fighting, fire-breathing dragons, magic, adventure in exotic locations. Besides, how long has it been since we've had a good barbarian movie? 
I can picture them casting Peter Dinklage as Gullius, Henry Cavill as Axe Battler, and Scarlett Johansson as Tyrus. But do you know what would be the ultimate easter egg? If they get Arnold Schwarzenegger, Conan the Barbarian himself, to play Death Adder. Henry Cavill and Arnold Schwarzenegger having a sword fight. You just, you just can't go wrong with that. Altered Beast. Love it or hate it, like it or lump it, there's no denying that status is a cult classic, being the original packing game for the Sega Mega Drive. It hasn't aged as well as other games on this list, but it does have a lot of potential for an excellent film adaptation. In addition to the spectacle of our heroes transforming into monsters in order to fight other monsters, the story is also quite interesting. The plot involves a demon called Neff taking over the underworld and kidnapping Zeus's daughter, so he commands a pair of dead centurions to RISE FROM YOUR GRAVE and go save her. Now, rescuing a princess was a common storyline in older games, but in Altered Beast, the damsel in distress is none other than the goddess Athena, whom the city of Athens is named after. So, how did Neff manage to capture her in the first place? She's the goddess of defensive warfare, not an easy woman to get hold of. In fact, how did Neff even manage to kick Hades out of the underworld in the first place? And why did Zeus resurrect these two centurions specifically? What can they do that the other 98 centurions can't? And what's their relationship to each other? Are they best friends? Cousins? Brothers? A couple? All of the above? A film adaptation would not only answer all of these questions, but would bring the story of Altered Beast full circle. Because the ending to the arcade version reveals that they were actually filming a movie all along. So come on Sega, let's see this film already! One of Sega's most popular arcade games that could potentially make the jump to the silver screen is Crazy Taxi. It's all about colourful cabbies driving at ridiculous speed and doing whatever crazy stunts are necessary to get their passengers to wherever they need to be. But the game doesn't really have a story, I hear you say. It's just about getting a high score. That can't work in a movie. Well, that's what I thought until I saw the hilarious film Taxi. A fast-paced action comedy where the main character is a taxi driver who also does crazy stunts like those seen in the Fast and Furious films. He outruns the police to get his passengers to wherever they need to go and get strong-armed by the police into helping them thwart a gang of armed robbers. Though I am of course talking about the original French version. The American remake with Queen Latifah is a waste of time. Except for that part where Marta gets tossed up by the dominatrix. You want to rent it, sir? Why? I just saw the best part. <laughs> but whatever narrative the film takes, I think we can all agree that you can't go wrong with a series of over-the-top car chases. Haunting Starring Poltergeist was one of the most memorable games for the Sega Mega Drive, also known as the Genesis in the United States. It was a unique gameplay loop for its time, possessing almost any household object and scaring the shit out of his family of rich arseholes. Poltergeist himself is essentially the anti-Casper. He's out for revenge against the arrogant twat who caused his death by selling him a dodgy skateboard. And the director best suited for this film? Tim Burton. It's got a dark and quirky premise that's right up Burton Street, and most of Paul's guy's pranks would look completely at home in a film like Beetlejuice or Nightmare Before Christmas. Plus, you take one look at the dad of this family and you instinctively think, yes, that's got to be Johnny Depp's character. What would you get if you mixed Alien and Iron Man up in a blender? Two broken DVDs. But if we're talking about story elements, then what we would get is Metroid the Movie. It's a series that pays tribute to the Alien films, even going so far as to name one of the main bad guys Ridley. Metroid perfectly captures the feelings of tension and isolation that made Alien such a compelling film. But with Samus' power suit and all its functionality, you could get some great science fiction action scenes akin to Iron Man in space. Also, the Metroid series is so rich in lore that Samus has the potential for a lot of characterization and development in the film series. Just as long as she's not so busy fawning over Adam that she forgets how her suit even works. Before we get to number 1, let's take a quick minute to recap. Number 10, Time Crisis. Number 9, Contra. Number 8, Typing of the Dead. Number 7, King's Quest. Number 6, Golden Axe. Number 5, Altered Beast. Number four, Crazy Taxi. Number three, Haunting Starring Poltergeist. And number two, Metroid. Some say that the Marvel Cinematic Universe jumped the shark after Avengers Endgame. 
The whole film franchise led up to the final showdown against Thanos, with every established superhero coming together to tackle a universe-spanning threat. It was one of the biggest cinematic events in the past decade, and there's only one video game series that could match its scale on the big screen. You know it makes sense. Why limit yourself to one game series when you can have a whole bunch of Capcom characters coming together while simultaneously catering to Marvel's obsession with the multiverse? The remaining Marvel heroes teaming up with the Street Fighters, the Stars Officers, Mega Man, the Darkstalkers, Phoenix Wright even! Would it be a complete mess, or would it be the greatest video game movie ever made? I believe it could very well be the latter. Just don't let Paul Anderson direct it. He's ruined enough Capcom franchises already. The last thing we need is him turning Marvel vs. Capcom into another Mila Jokovich ego trip. Now, before we finish our video, I'd like to give an honourable mention to Kingdom Hearts. It's a game that's all about revisiting classic Disney films, so the Men in the Magic Kingdom already own the rights to most of the characters anyway, and we've already seen most of the characters from the Disney films hanging out together in House of Mouse, so why not? Also, if Mulan is involved, it would give her voice actress, Ming-Na Wen, a chance to perform in a GOOD video game movie for a change. And those are the video games that I think would make for good film adaptations. If you have any ideas for your own possibilities of video game movie adaptations, by all means, discuss them in the comment section. Cheerio!